Thank you very much. It's, I hope that you are ready for, for what I'm going to share with you because some things is common sense but not necessarily common practice. And, and number one key is, and I want you to write this down, resilient purpose-driven mindset. Resilient purpose-driven mindset. That with all the, the stuff that's going on, with all of the confusion from the, from the scientific community, from the, from the leadership, from the presidency on down, it has collateral effect. And there are so many people that's confused. You wear the mask so you don't have to wear the mask. Or if you have the coronavirus, you need to wear the mask so you don't give it to somebody else. And if you have it, uh, you should stay in the house. They got all kind of things. If you make love, you should have the mask on. That is not romantic to me. <laughs> and, you know, I say, wait a minute, y'all coming all up and in the bedroom. Okay, baby, put your mask on. Well, how am I going to kiss you with my mask on? <laughs> oh, hey, whatever. But all kind of, if you, you know, all this stuff going on. And you could die from talking to somebody with a mask that's held under their nose. You know why my hair is like it and I'm looking like kid and, and play like kid from House Party? Because my barber, he likes to wear his mask like this. I said, man, put your mask on, all right? I told him. So he does this. Man, hey, hello. What? Come on, have I told? Put your mask on, cover your mouth. I know your breath kicking like Bruce Lee, but cover the nose too. It's, uh, I mean, about to make me lose my mind over here. So I decided, I'm not going through that. I'm not going through that. I'm, I'm not coming out the house till 2027. And I... I work on myself. I got some new squirrel friends. I'm bilingual. I speak squirrely. And I listen to motivational messages. First thing in the morning, you want to listen to my voice. Go on YouTube. Find Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome. Uh, find Les Brown. It's possible. And I tell the story about the bamboo tree. Uh, find Les Brown getting unstuck, and I talk about chicken, man. Listen to things. Listen to me. Listen to things that can build your mental resiliency. You want to have a resilient, purpose-driven mindset that will focus your mind on the goals that you want to achieve, on the things that you need to do to reinvent yourself, to rethink your life, to, to see whether or not you're on the path to becoming the next greatest version of yourself. And in order to, to get through this time, I mean, sometimes I, I, when I wake up in the morning, I said, this is still not a dream. This is crazy. There's, uh, people say, I'd like to come by and see you. Is that right? Okay, I'm on the first floor. We can talk through the window. <laughs> come on. I mean, let me just think about this. Every day when I see people with masks on looking outside my window, seeing the squirrels jumping from one tree to the other, they never lose their footing. That's why I learned squirrely. Tyrone, he's leading everybody. He's introducing everybody to me. He's the most motivated squirrel in my neighborhood. Les Brown is about to do his stream yard or another Zoom. <laughs> My kids say I've been in the house too long. I'm, I'm suffering from cabin fever. Whatever. <laughs> so read 30 to 40 pages of something positive every day. Drill yourself. You say, well, I've listened to it. No, 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 no. Listen to it until you're manifesting results. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. So in order to develop that resilient, purpose-driven mindset, you, you want to listen to the messages over and over, take notes on things that jumps out for you and, and become the embodiment of it. 
and develop that kind of mindset and how you carry yourself and how you face this thing called life. Faith not tested can be trusted. So you got to have faith in yourself. But we're being tested right now. If you've never been tested, listen to me. No test, no testimony. Faith not tested can't be trusted. It's easy to have faith when things are going great. When the kids are acting like they have good sense. When you have a job, you have money, you have your health. Whoa, no big deal there. But when life knocks on the door, when you go through some stuff, when you get a bad diagnosis, that's when you have to pull on your faith. That's, that's when you have to be resilient. I've got a saying, and all of you know it, life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Now, here's the other thing that's very important. As you look at yourself, you want to master at least three things. Three things, multiple streams of income. Three things, I speak, I train speakers, and I'm an author. And I got other things I'm expanding. And I'm 75. Well, why are you still doing it? Because you're never too old to learn and you're never too young to teach. I believe that the reason that uh, that that we look at people over a certain age and Alzheimer's and dementia becomes active is because they are inactive. My mother used to say it, if you don't use it, you lose it. It, it. it takes longer to wear out than to rust out. So the goal is, is to be actively engaged in life, raising the bar on yourself. Turn down the amount of time that you spend entertaining yourself, watching the tele-vision, as, as my daughter, Dr. Ona Brown, would say, and, and, and do things that will stimulate your thinking. It will keep you young. Just because you're 75, chronologically, don't mean that you have to look 75. No, no. And so I decided just because I'm 75, you're not going to count me out. I'm still here. I'm going to be engaged in this thing called life because I have not done my best work yet. You have not done your best work yet. Every day is the best day of your life, as Orrin Hudson would say out of Atlanta, a chess master. Why? Because if you don't believe that, try missing a day. <laughs> Every day is the best day of your life. Look for ways in which you can begin to master something, learn something today that you did not know yesterday. Expand your horizon, expand your vision of what's possible for you. Continuously be a student. My high school theme was you never find out how much you know until you find out how little you know. Study the people that are going to make it today are looking at the various trends. They, they're going from mindset mastery, learning three things that they can master to create, create non-performance income, and they're studying continuously, learning things that they can get at the end of their fingertips on the Internet. There's no excuse, no excuse today for not being in the mindset of achieving something beyond that which you have already done. Life is an adventure. Helen Keller said life is either a daring adventure or it's boring. And, and this is an exciting time that you can earn money at the comfort of your home. But think about that. Virtually around the world. I, I just finished talking to some people in Germany. And then I talked to some people in Toronto, Canada. I'm making money around the world, and I'm still home, virtually. Take advantage of this. This is something you want to learn, mindset mastery and skill set mastery of the Internet. Now, here's something else. You have to, as you look at yourself, look at your goals, look at your dreams. Not only is a resilient, purpose-driven mindset important, 
and mastering three things, three things that you can begin to generate income from. But the third thing that's also very important, and that is the power of connection. The power of the right connections, that can change everything for you. When, and I want to share this with you. Your, your success and, and, and your ability to expand your life and the things you want to do is directly related to the connections that you have. That's, that's the name of the game. Opportunities and success come about because of who you are connected to versus who you are divided from. So you want to look at your connections, and as Jim Rohn would say, and ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? Is it helpful? Am I growing mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, intellectually? What, what is this relationship doing to me? Is, is it giving me an advantage? in terms of knowledge, and in, in, in terms of resources and contacts, do you realize that 80% of the available jobs today never get posted? You know why? Because they get gobbled up by people who have the right connections. That's, that's the power of connections. Learning how to develop as George Frazier would say, relationship capital, relationships that, that have value, access to resources, and knowledge, information that you don't have. Here's something else. The power of communication. Whew. The power to tell your story. I can tell you how, how important that is. I, I used to be a state legislator. I beat an incumbent. 22-year incumbent. I'm not bragging, but I'm just telling you what is. Two attorneys ran before me, and they lost, and they were very smart. I have no college education. And they lost. And you know why? They did not know how to tell their story. See, politics, as in everything in life, is the story you tell about yourself, the story you tell about your opponent, the story your opponent tells about you, and the story you tell about yourself if you are the opponent. Let me give you an example. 45. You notice he always gives all of his opponents names, Sleepy Joe. If There are times I look at him, I say, oh, God, this is when I really miss politics. If, if I were running, I said, listen, traitor Trump, you've told 16,241 lies or 16,241 statements. Let me ask you something. What are you hiding in those taxes? You all went all the way to the Supreme Court, and they knew it was frivolous and threw it back. What are you hiding? Come on, talk to me, brother. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't know what, let me tell, I love a good debate. Let me tell you, they don't know. I would say, every time I would open my mouth, you know, Hillary Clinton's not running, and, and I heard him talk about her yesterday. He called her Crooked Hillary. Every time I would open my mouth, I said, you know something, traitor Trump? I know you're in love with Putin. I know you know, I, I know you're all cool. I know y'all down, y'all in the closet, but you got to come out sometime. But let me share this with you. You can't sell democracy down the tube because you're in love with Putin. No, it ain't going down like that. And something else I, I, I want to share with you, Trader Trump, that as you look at yourself, look at your goals and dreams, why is it you never talk about Putin? What's going on there? And it's none of my personal business, but I'm just wondering, aren't you married? What's happening up in here? 
my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. He would want to run all, he would be chasing me all around the debate podium. <laughs> I love debates, oh my God. I was in this debate in Whitehall in Ohio. And Whitehall is called Whitehall because they didn't allow black people to live in Whitehall. And I was in debate with Bill Kopp, who was the representative from the 29th district. And he and I were debating. And, and, and so at some point he said, uh, you know what? He said, Les Brown, I just don't think that you will be qualified for my seat. And I say, excuse me, it's my seat. And when I win, here are the things that I'm going to do. I'm going to prevent utility companies from turning off somebody's utilities on Friday afternoon because they can freeze to death over the weekend. When I win. I'm going to make it required that you that that money order companies have insurance coverage because a major money order company filed bankruptcy and people had worthless paper. When I win, I'm going to have a, a constituents day that every Saturday people come in and talk to me face to way, face to face. And and one of the people in the audience, she stood up. She said, Mr. Brown. You are a very fierce debater. You're very good. You're very knowledgeable. But you're still a nigger. I said, thank you very much. I never would have known that had you not told me. <laughs> the audience looked at her and looked at me and I was still cracking up. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Whoa, thank you, dear. Thank you. And people came out. They started laughing at my laughter. My mother taught me how to be how to be graceful in an ungraceful situation. They came out and said, man, you know what? We vote for you. <laughs> for you not to get angry. For you to handle that statement like you did. See, anger is a wind that blows out the lamp of the mind. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> I laughed all the way to my car. <laughs> that tilt the scale. I won 26000 to 3000 Your ability to tell your story. It's important. The story you tell about yourself. The story you tell about your opponent. And if you're in sales, the story you tell about yourself, because people are asking, who are you? What do you have? And why should I care? The story you tell about your company, the story you tell about your product or your service, and how you tell it is very important. I was working with someone I was coaching this morning, and, and she came on, just really mealy mouth. Oh, you know, we're going to help you begin to straighten your finances out. No, 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 no. You can't come up in here like that. People's attention span goes in every 10 seconds. No. Speak like you own this space. This is who you are. This is what you do, and you are the one. You are an authority. Do you understand? Yes. Very good. Let's go at it again. Bring your voice down from your esophagus. Down, lower, lower, lower. And it made all the difference. And how this person projected the story. You can create an experience with the story. The story, you can transform people's lives. I want you to write this down. I want you to, uh, this quote was given to me. And I, I want to give me that. Where's that quote I was looking for? And it is very, the story, it, it, what it says succinctly. When you tell a story, something's hap something happens in a person's mind and in their heart that, that it, 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 it begins to touch the emotions. And the story begins to expand their mindset to the possibilities. The story stays in the heart. Information is in the head, but the 
story. It's in your heart. And people are basically emotional. So when you work on your mindset, when you upgrade your connections, and when you work to impact your storytelling skills, the possibilities unlimited is what you can do. If you're interested in, in learning how to tell your story, to transform people's lives, or to grow your business, to increase your sales, to build your multi-level marketing organization, if you might be involved in real estate or you might in, be involved in insurance, you, you, you just have a, a, a business that you want to grow. You are the storyteller about your business. That's who you are. And your ability to do that is dependent on the skills that's required. Here's the quote that I was looking for. One day, when you tell your story, and listen to this, how you overcame what you went through, it will become someone else's guide on how they can overcome the same situation. Did you hear what I just said? One day when you tell your story of how you overcame what you went through, it will be a guide for somebody or millions of people on how they can do the same thing because you are an example of what they can do. That's the power of story and influencing, impacting, and transforming people's lives individually and collectively. If you want some coaching on that, if you are hungry to be good, hungry to transform lives, hungry to earn more money virtually, virtually from home, then you can own, then you can earn on your job. I want you to put voice in the comment section. Voice in the comment section. That's where we are now. That's where we are. Just think about the, the, the new reality now is virtual. Earning money from home virtually. Multiple streams of income virtually. Leading with your story. Creating an experience before the green light on your computer at home and earn more money. I'll teach you how to do that and have fun doing it and earn what I call quiet money or earning money while you sleep. You have something special. Remember, mindset resiliency, the power of connections, and the power to tell your story. You have greatness in you. It's time for you to do the greater work. It's your time. It's your time because you woke up this morning. It's your time. Life is on your side. Put voice in the comment section. Voice in the comment section. If you'd like to be coached on how to tell your story, how to take your story, your business, your income to the next level, put voice in the comment section. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's Baby Boy. That's my story, and I'll stick it to it.